I'm Catherine. I live in London, best city in the world. I've always worked in areas where I was the minority and in fields where there's not a lot of ethnic minorities in general, but there's not a lot of black women at all. You walk into Parliament, you won't see many people who look like me. That was my brother and I think that he's a great example of just a person who's aware of the opportunities. It has been coupled with a lot of hard work and tenacity and just perseverance. Um, I don't believe that you can get anywhere without those things at all. In the workplace, you prove yourself, you do your work, you're there to add value to what, where you're working. But as a black woman, you have the added hurdle that it's like you have to prove yourself twice over. It's kind of like you're almost invisible. It's that sense of dismissiveness of the issues that black women face. And so if, you're, if you have a strong opinion, oh, you're aggressive. You know, there's that depiction that you're not someone who can have those intelligent conversations. That made me a little bit hesitant, even sometimes to say, speak up in meetings, or to think, oh, maybe my ideas are maybe not quite that great. I got to a point where I thought, actually, no, this will, this will damage my career. It will damage me socially. It will damage my ability to fulfill the potential that I believe I have. You say that wedding that you went to, something happened, didn't finish. Oh, well, so this wedding. Yeah. Um, I was there, it was in the countryside, in the middle of nowhere, I had no reception and um, so I was wearing like a green, long green dress mm -hmm. and the servers were there wearing like black and white. After the ceremony we went to the reception, the guy and I went to line up to get some tea because yeah. we were quite cute. And this person, I was pouring tea for my friend who had a back problem, so I was pouring more than one cup. Yeah. So this lady comes and was like, thank you. What? And he's like, she was like, can I get another one? And then the person behind her, who was younger, was like mortified. Like this girl was mortified. Oh and she was like, God. and I was like, I don't, I don't work at the wedding. I'm not working at the wedding. I'm a guest. Oh my God. She was like, I, she was like, I'm sorry. I was like, no, nope, take the tea. Mm -hmm. I was like I so, I was like trying all my best to be like oh so nice because it was a like, room full of people. It was so natural to her. She wasn't doing it in, I would mm -hmm. think, in a malicious way. To be honest, it really took me aback because, and I think the girl behind her could see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'm really, really sorry. But I also think like for her, like yes, she was a bit older, but she was old enough to know no, better. better. Yeah. So you wow. see the mindset sometimes yeah. that people are in where they just assume that you belong in a certain yeah, category yeah, things like that yeah. you can't be there for social yeah, reasons yeah. some people are not aware of the level of privilege that they have and sometimes they get sort of defensive when you point out that um, but it's not really a personal issue it's more of a societal thing and I think when people are aware of that they become their eyes open to the invisible structures in place that do perpetuate that level of privilege a lot of my issues is with what you see in the media. As great as it is, and as globalised as it's now becoming. So you're perpetuating this thing like, a woman who looks a certain way is better. Because you're saying, these are the people that I want, this is what sells. And then ends up with people who bleach themselves, you know, I, I want to look like this because this is what is seen as valuable. You know, you're even seen as richer. <laughs> Uh, you've got more money, you've got more social status. And that goes back to the message that has, is sent out even today that, you know, the more you conform to a certain stereotype, the better you are. There's something in psychology called the halo effect. So if you look like this, I automatically assume that you're a good person. And I think the media does that thing of like, if you look a certain way, if you're blonde haired, blue eyed, if you're you know, sweet in your demeanour, whatever that means, <laughs> um, then you are automatically the ideal, you are automatically better, but more importantly, you're entitled. There's no question about whether you belong. If you live your life with integrity, nobody has a right to tell you where you can and cannot belong. You have a right to be in any social circle you want to be in. I'm hesitant to call myself a feminist. I'm someone who advocates for empowered women and empowered black women because that's a voice we, that is 
it's not seen enough, it's not heard enough, and it's not just the job of a few famous women. It's the job of like every one of us. We all have things that we're ignorant about and we can all learn from one another. But just make it a point to ask people questions. You learn more by asking. When you ask someone a question without telling them what the answer is, you have an opportunity to learn. You have an opportunity to find out something that you didn't know. I think people in the black community need to yeah, support one another a little bit more. Somebody else's success is a good reflection on the community as a whole. Whatever God blesses you with is what he sees fit to bless you with. If you're a great mother, be a great mother. You know, if you wear nice clothes, that's right, you work hard to afford them. Don't feel like you have to explain your life because you don't. You are enough just as you are.